Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the relation between the roots and the coefficients of higher degree polynomial equations. I have already created videos on the relation between roots and coefficients of quadratic equation. I will provide the link in the description. Feel free to watch those videos. And here we are going to take an example of a cubic equation and a quartic equation and then a polynomial equation to show you what is the relationship between the roots and the coefficients of a higher degree polynomial. So first let's begin with a quadratic equation just to quickly revise what we have learned already. So for example, I'm taking a quadratic equation which is like this. I'm taking the general form of a quadratic equation. Now if the two roots of this equation are alpha sub 1 and alpha sub 2, then this equation can be written as the leading coefficient which is a times x minus alpha sub 1 times x minus alpha sub 2 where the two roots are alpha sub 1 and alpha sub 2. Now if we multiply the factors we are going to get something like this and then if we reorganize the terms little bit then we can combine the x terms like this and if we rewrite our original equation like this if we take a as a common factor then let's see what we get inside. So we will have x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a is equal to 0, right? And now what we are going to do, we are going to compare these two equations, right? Because they are the same equation. We just have used the roots in one of the forms and in the other form we are not using the roots, but they are the same equation. So let's compare them and you can see that the coefficient of x squared is same in both the cases. In the, in the pink form here, the form in the pink color, there the coefficient is 1 and in the green color also the coefficient is 1, right here. Let me underline right here. So or maybe I can simply write that 1 right here. So so this is the coefficient 1 times x squared and here also 1 times x squared. So the coefficient of x squared is 1 and then what about the coefficient of x? Well the coefficient of x here is kind of looking like this. If you look at the coefficient of x in both the forms you will see that in one form we have positive b over a and in the other form we have negative of alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2. So they are equal because they are the coefficient of x. So they better be equal. Now from here what can you say? Well from here we can say that alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 must be equal to negative b over a. And then if we compare the constant term between the two forms, if we compare the constant term, how is it going to look like? For the constant term you can see that in the first form we have positive c over a and in the second form we have alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2. So I am going to compare those two, they better be equal. So we can say that alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 that will be equal to positive c over a. So for the quadratic equation we can see that the sum of the roots is actually negative b over a and product of the roots is actually positive c over a. Now what is b? Well b is the coefficient of the x term and what is a? a is the leading coefficient and what is c? c is the constant term. So let me make a quick note here that c is the constant term and a is the leading coefficient. Now let's take a cubic equation and see how this works. Let's suppose we have a cubic equation like this and it can also be written like this. If we take a as a common factor out then it's going to look like this. Now if we assume that the three roots of this cubic equation are alpha sub 1 and alpha sub 2 and alpha sub 3 then can we rewrite this equation like this? And now we are going to multiply the three factors together and let's see what happens. First we are going to multiply the first two factors. So from the first two factors what are we going to get? We are going to get something like this and then we have one other factor which is x minus alpha sub 3 and now we are going to multiply those two factors the big one and the small one right. So let's see. So finally it's going to look like this. It will have a times then x cubed minus alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 times x squared plus alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 plus alpha sub 3 times alpha sub 1 whole multiplied by x and then minus alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 all of that is equal to 0. So now our cubic equation kind of looks like this. So now we are going to compare the two forms and see how the coefficients match up. Right. So now if you look at this coefficient right here, if you look at the coefficient of x squared, in the first form we have positive b over a but in the second form we have negative sum of the three roots. As you can see right here it's negative sum of the three roots. So if we compare them then how is it going to look like? Well then we can say that positive b over a must be equal to the negative sum of the roots. So we can say well negative alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 
plus alpha sub 3 that is equal to positive b over a and then from here we can say that alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 is equal to negative b over a and then if we compare the coefficient of the x term the coefficient is going to kind of look like this in the original equation we have coefficient of x term as positive c over a and then in our other form here we have it as positive the sum of the product of two roots at a time right so it is alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 plus alpha sub 3 times alpha sub 1 so we can compare them then so then can we write it like this and this is another important relationship so i have highlighted that and now let's compare the constant term in both the forms so in the first form what is the constant term in the first form the constant term is positive d over a and in the second form the constant term is negative alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 so we can compare them then and this is the other important relationship between the roots and the coefficients now one thing to notice here if you look at the first one right here where we have the alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 that is equal to negative b over a can we write this as negative 1 whole to the power 1 times b over a and then over here on the second one where we have the alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 plus alpha sub 3 times alpha sub 1 equals positive c over a can we write that as negative 1 squared times c over a think about it because negative 1 squared would be positive 1 and that's exactly what we have positive c over a and then in the third one can we write it as negative 1 cubed times d over a so you are starting to see a pattern here right the pattern is that as we take higher and higher degree polynomial we are going to see the relationship between the roots and the coefficients which kind of going to go like this next let's take a quartic equation and see how this works out let's suppose we have a quartic equation like this if we take out a as a common factor can we rewrite the equation like this now let's assume that the roots of this quartic equation are alpha sub 1 alpha sub 2 alpha sub 3 and alpha sub 4 so using the factor form can we rewrite the equation like this now let's try to multiply the factors one by one so first we are going to multiply the first two factors and then the equation is going to look like this the product of the first two factors would look like this and then we have the two other factors now let's try to multiply the bigger factor with the next smaller factor and then finally we are going to multiply the last factor with the large factor here right so let's do that multiplication now let's try to group the like terms together first we are going to write the x to the power 4 term as is we only have one term here which is x to the power 4 and then let's try to group the x cubed terms actually we have four of them so we can write it like this and then let's try to group the x squared terms we have six of them and we can group them like this and then let's group the x terms we have four of the x terms so we can group them like this and finally we have the constant term which is alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 times alpha sub 4 next we are going to compare the coefficients of these various terms with the original form that we had up there so let me scroll up a little bit and you see that original form in the pink color we are going to compare the coefficient of these various terms like for example you know we will be comparing the coefficient of x cube term and then we will be comparing the coefficient of x squared term then the x term and the constant term right so let's do that comparison I am going to write down this pink color form once again down below if you look at the x to the power 4 term they both have the coefficient as 1 there is no coefficient means there is a coefficient 1 so there is really nothing to compare now if you look at the x cube term between these two forms you will see in the original form we have b over a as the coefficient of x cube term but in the new expanded form we have alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 plus alpha sub 4 and their negative value that is the coefficient of x cube term right so can we compare it like this so comparing the coefficient of the x cube terms we can write it like this and if we multiply both sides by a negative one we are going to get something like this and we can also write it like this we can say negative one with a power one or exponent one times b over a so finally we get something like this now in this case what is b well b is the coefficient of the x cubed term and a is the leading coefficient right now let's compare the coefficients of the x squared terms in the expanded form the coefficient of the x squared term is like this and that will be equal to c over a because that is the coefficient of the x squared term in the original form 
and that can be written as negative 1 square because we have a positive c over a right so we are intentionally writing it like this to establish a pattern here so this will be negative 1 square times c over a so finally we get something like this so this is another important relationship between the coefficients and the roots of the equation now let's try to compare the coefficients of the x terms in the expanded form the coefficient of the x term is like this and that will be equal to positive d over a because that is the coefficient of the x term in the original form now if we multiply both sides by a negative one then it's going to look like this that will be equal to negative d over a and for that negative i'm going to write it like this and that is our other relationship between the coefficients and the roots and finally we are going to compare the constant terms in the expanded form the constant term is like this i am doing a white underline here which is alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 times alpha sub 4 that is the constant term and then in the original expression the constant term is actually e over a so i do another white underline there so now let's compare those two so that is positive e over a and i am going to intentionally write it like this negative 1 power 4 times e over a and that is our last important relationship between the coefficients and the roots and finally we are going to take a polynomial equation and we are going to try and establish the relationship between the coefficients and the roots so let's take a generic polynomial equation of n degree Let's suppose this is our generic polynomial equation of n degree and now if we take the leading coefficient out as a common factor then this equation can be rewritten like this. Now let's assume that the n roots of this n degree polynomial equation are like this. Let's assume that the roots are alpha sub 1, alpha sub 2, alpha sub 3 etc up to alpha sub n and there will be n roots because the degree of this polynomial equation is n so there will definitely be n roots. Now using the factor form can we rewrite this equation like this? and there will be total n such factors i mean other than the leading coefficient of course and now if we multiply all of them together and try to expand this form it is going to follow the same pattern that we have seen for a quadratic or a cubic or a quartic equation right i'm not going to try and expand because we really don't know what is the value of n so we really cannot try and expand it like this but i can show you what is the pattern going to be as you have seen before the coefficient of the x to the power n minus 1 term is going to be like this it will pretty much be the sum of the roots kind of like this and that will be equal to negative 1 to the power 1 times the coefficient of the x to the power n minus 1 term in our original form right there i have underlined that term right there so that would be a sub n minus 1 over a sub n a sub n is the leading coefficient a sub n minus 1 is the coefficient of the x to the power n minus 1 term in our original form but in the modified form we have a sub n minus 1 over a sub n as the coefficient of x to the power n minus 1 and that coefficient will be equal to the sum of the roots like this but of course it will be a negative value so we are keeping the negative 1 to the power 1 on the right hand side and also this is generally denoted in the sigma notation like this and that is a very important relationship between the roots and the coefficients so let me highlight it now if we think about the coefficient of the x to the power n minus 2 term then in the expanded form it would look something like this and this sum will be equal to the coefficient of the x to the power n minus 2 term in our modified original equation and for the positive value i am going to write it like this i am going to say negative 1 square and the coefficient there is actually a sub n minus 2 over a sub n using the sigma notation it can be written like this and that is another important relationship between the roots and the coefficients and similarly if you think about the coefficient of the x to the power n minus 3 term in the original form and the expanded form they're going to be like this it will be sum of three roots at a time right all possible combination of three roots at a time so we can write it like this and it will be a negative value it will be negative of a sub n minus 3 over a sub n so for the negative I am going to write it like this and that is also another important relationship and similarly if you think about the coefficient of the x to the power n minus 4 term they are going to compare kind of like this it will be the sum of all possible combinations of 4 roots multiplied at a time and it will be a positive value I am going to write it as negative 1 to the power 4 and it will compare with a sub n minus 4 over a sub n. 
and that is also another important relationship and it will go on like this finally we are going to see what is the constant term going to look like for the constant term it will be the product of all of the roots so we really do not need to use any sigma notation because it's just a single product and the product is like this alpha sub 1 times alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 3 times etc times alpha sub n so it is just a single product of all of the roots together and that will be equal to negative 1 to the power n depending on the value of n it could be a positive value or a negative value depending on what is that n is right and it will be a sub 0 over a sub n in my example i have taken a sub n as the leading coefficient but some authors or maybe many authors they use a sub 0 as the leading coefficient Personally, I find that a bit confusing because I would really love to have the same kind of notation for the coefficient as well as the exponent of x. So because the first term is x to the power n, I would prefer to have the leading coefficient as a sub n. That way it's easy to follow for me. So let's keep a note that this a sub n is nothing but the leading coefficient. So let me kind of highlight right here. And what is a sub 0? Well, a sub 0 is the constant term in our original polynomial equation. Now let's take an example and see how we can utilize this concept to solve different problems, right? So I'm going to take an example here. Let's suppose we have an example like this where we have been given that f of x is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3, etc. up to x minus 10. So this is pretty much a factor form of a polynomial expression here. It's not an equation. We are taking it as a polynomial expression or function. And the question here is that if we expand this function, what would be the coefficient? coefficient of x to the power 9. Now from here clearly you can see that the leading coefficient is 1 so the coefficient of x to the power 10 will be 1. There is no doubt about that. But we have to find out what is the coefficient of x to the power 9 in the expanded form, right? Now if you sit down and try to expand this thing, it will take some time to do that. Now instead of that, what we are going to do? Well, coefficient of x to the power 9 is actually going to be something like this. Coefficient of x to the power 9 will be actually negative 1 to the power 1 times a sub n minus 1 over a sub n. Now what is a sub n? That's the leading coefficient and in our example, the leading coefficient is actually 1. So then we have to find out what is the value of a sub n minus 1 and we can easily utilize this particular formula right here. Let me kind of highlight it like this. This particular formula that's what we are going to use. That alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 all the way up to plus alpha sub n that would be equal to negative 1 power 1 times a sub n minus 1 over a sub n. So using that formula we are going to solve our example very easily. Let's try that. So the coefficient of x to the power 9, this is essentially a sub n minus 1. That's the coefficient of x to the power 9 where n is equal to 10. We have been provided a 10 degree polynomial function and we have to find out the coefficient of x to the power 9 which will be essentially a sub n minus 1. And by the way, also as you can see from the definition of the function, we have a sub n, the leading coefficient is actually 1 because there is nothing right here. So I'm assuming that we have a 1 right there. So our leading coefficient is 1 that means a sub n is equal to 1 and we have to find out what is a sub n minus 1. Now using our formula we know that negative 1 to the power 1 times a sub n minus 1 over a sub n is equal to alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 plus etc up to alpha sub n. Now in this case n is 10. So let me make a note of that also n is actually equal to 10. So then can we write it like this? So this will become negative 1 times a sub 9 over a sub 10 is equal to alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 etc up to plus alpha sub n. Now what is alpha sub 1 or alpha sub 2 or alpha sub 3 in this example? Well actually this 1 right here this is actually our alpha sub 1 and if you think about this 2 that is actually our alpha sub 2 and the 3 is actually alpha sub 3 and similarly 10 is actually alpha sub 10. Well then it's pretty easy. So you can say okay this must be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc up to plus 10. Now from here what do we get? 
so now let's substitute the value so this is actually negative 1 times a sub 9 over what is a sub 10 well a sub 10 is actually 1 as you can see right here a sub 10 is actually 1 so I'm going to use that value so that is 1 and this is equal to what is the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to plus 10 well this sum will actually be 55 you can use the concept of arithmetic series this sum will turn out to be 55 so I'm directly putting it like this so from here we can say well then and negative of a sub 9 is equal to 55 and from here we can say well then a sub 9 will be equal to negative 55 right if you multiply both sides by a negative 1 it will give you a sub 9 as negative 55 and that is our answer I hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video